Welcome to renovating number five, where we try to renovate this beautiful old home that needs a lot of love. On this episode, we focus on the exterior of the house in preparation for painting and installing the new deck. Andy makes light work in removing the old existing deck. It doesn't need much persuading. So, that's what's left of the, uh, what are they called? Boots for the wood? Stirrups. Stirrups, that's it. I know it's not to do with horse riding. And uh, that is actually, this end here, is actually meant to be attached to that bit of metal there. And all the way along, we didn't actually undo any of them or break of them. They were actually all sheared off. Oh, I can't see where the others are. They're all... They all just literally fell off, and you, you probably saw in the video how easy it was just to knock them down. So it was just a, a massive accident waiting to happen. And uh, where they had the uh, deck so tight to the um, wall, and I've never bought the painting, uh, all the water and moisture has literally ruined the just yeah, that is, but this up this here is, is rotten. Yeah, it's got to come out. So, unfortunately, all this has got to be replaced. It's a bit annoying. It's not too bad, though. It's not as handy as bit. Well, so far. What we can see. I mean, there's something going on here, isn't it? What's it? I'm sure that was supposed to be attached to something. Mm -hmm. No, it looks certain. Most of it seems to be superficial, doesn't it? Just paint. Up in this corner here. Yeah. Oh, this has got to come out. Yeah. So this corner, unfortunately, where it's probably where it's probably where the um, where it shook so much, it's ruined all the end panel of panels of the pad in here. So hopefully, we'll just be able to cut it off put some in rather than replacing whole pieces but unfortunately the whole end is ruined. The trees sadly have been smothered to death by poison ivy and the roots have died off and made them unstable and because this is on the edge of a footpath it's deemed dangerous for people walking past. They have to be taken down. But our plans are cut short. What was supposed to be a quick emergency on some trees turned into something a little bit more serious. So it's been a bit of a rough day today. We went, we had a phone call this morning from our neighbour, who's really lovely, and told us that there's a tree that blown down from the winds. And it'd gone over the road. We hadn't planned to go in today. Um, we've been on holiday. Uh, noticed that there was some other trees that were uh, not looking good, they were rotten and being held up just by this weed that consumed them, so they were wobbly. So we were concerned about them. And we decided that we were going to clear up some of the mess and get the trailer to put it, move it around and get the bin. Uh, we attached the trailer to the back of the car and I noticed that the drop saw was in the wrong place. It was in the way. And so I picked, I locked the top of the drop saw and I picked it up to move it. And unfortunately the power was still on. Uh, and hence I have now two fingers in bandages. Uh, luckily I haven't lost my fingers. <laughs> That is the bonus thing, but I have severed all down here, down the side of my fingers, on both the little finger. The little finger's only a little bit, <laughs> but this one's very deep, and I've severed some tendons and nerves, so I can't actually fit the ends of my fingers anymore. And unfortunately, when I did it, I also nicked my bone. I was very, very lucky. Very lucky. And the thought of 
what could have really, really happened. Um, so tomorrow I have to have surgery. And they need to, they've just temporarily bandaged it because they need to clean it out and give it a good scrub because it was a sore on, on, a, on a bone. They didn't want to risk infection and losing my finger altogether. I'm not a happy bunny. That's my fault. Okay, so today's challenge is to replace all the rotten wood that's on the exterior of the building. And as you can see, Bandy pokes it with a lip. It's uh, all rotten and completely. And we've replaced some of the panels. So this one's been replaced. And all the ones on the end have been replaced. And we've still got to do one well, that, that's underneath the house. That needs replacing. So I'll set you down here and you can watch. Unfortunately, we don't have enough new cladding order to replace this side of the house, so we are going to try and patchwork the old pieces removed from around the back. We tried nailing these small bits, but they kept breaking into pieces because the wood was old. So we had to stick the wood to the frame instead. It's not going to be pretty, but a lot cheaper than if we had had more wood milled into this profile. Post-surgery now. Um, I'm 100% uh, damaged both my ligament and my uh, nerve um, so it wasn't just a little nick it was completely chopped it off and it wasn't a straight cut either it was jagged I had an amazing surgeon she was lovely um, she was actually uh, a trainee surgeon because we don't have a, we have a surgeon actually in Wollongong Hospital, um, a professor, um, but he's training up. So she's on her fourth year, third year of training, but she was excellent. And she managed to um, stitch both the ligament and the nerve. The ligament she's not worried about, she says that has sewn back together. It was a bit of a challenge because obviously a serrated knife or saw blade um, made it ugly so she had to tidy it up to sew it back together but the nerve because that was um, on the hinge and it apparently all branches off the nerve um, hasn't been as she's connected it but I've lost sensation in my finger in certain places and she doesn't think that will come back I have feeling in the end of my finger, which is probably the most important part of your finger that you want to have feel. And it's just down the side. And so now I've just got to do physiotherapy, which is um, fun, to try and get movement back in my fingers, because obviously they don't really move because of the ligament. So I'm now left with a nice splint, because I'm not allowed to bend it um, in certain places, because because the ligament was torn along here. And so my finger's not stable going this way. So the end, if I catch it, could really damage it. So I'm alright going this way. Well it's stiff, it doesn't move properly. But but she doesn't want it to the end uh, to, to bend on the end like this. Um, yeah, yeah. the little finger, like that, that that's nothing. It was just a flesh wound, nothing important. And it's all dried up and nice. Whereas this finger now, fortunately, it's still um, damp and hasn't quite knitted together properly. And um, so we've got to leave it on for a bit longer, the bandage, to dry out. It's more than people worry about infection to the bone. So I even managed to fracture the finger as well. I did a really good job, I did it half heartedly. Um, and I think if I hadn't been wearing my gloves, it'd be a different story. I wouldn't. I'd have, be short of a few fingers. So I am pretty lucky. I can't take my bandage off for a bit 
until Monday. So um, after Monday, I will show you the scar. So if you're squeamish, you'll have to run away because <laughs> it's not pretty. <laughs> but it's a good lesson not to touch electrical devices if they're plugged in. <laughs> All right, update over. Go back to work. I don't know if you can see very well, you can see that the, the wood underneath the door is also rotten. And it goes all the way along, and that's because of the concrete steps. These concrete steps are a bit of a pain, actually. Um, they put them in some time ago. They're not original to the house. When the house was originally built, this is an add-on extra. And they didn't think when they put the brick walk the stairs in because when the water runs and slopes towards the house and then therefore now all the wood underneath is all rotten. So in order for us to get that to get the wood out, cladding, it's not wood, we've got to now cut into the concrete. Which is not an easy task. Right, so we've cut out the big, ch the concrete, and uh, you can see, but there's still rebar in the bottom of it, and we don't have the reciproco saw with us to be able to take that out. So that's a job we're going to have to come back to do. And we've taken out the rotten wood. It was very, very wet, but also it was all smothered in ants. And you can see here, this is actually the frame of the house, and that is starting to crumble. It's okay, it's only surface at the moment, but I think if we hadn't taken off the wood and removed it, then it would obviously get a lot worse. I mean, you can see it's just crumbling. But that's, that's the frame of the house. So... A quick look at the wooden cladding, and you can see how rotten the wood is. These two pieces were originally one. Because it's a concrete um, deck here, and we're going to put wood on it, the, it's going to have the same situation as we had previously, where the wood will just run off and go into and rot anything that's along on the wood. So we're going to put some flashing in. And then my model here has just designed one, or roughly what he thinks it's going to be like. So I'm going to put the flashing along the back, against the wood and then it'll be a little channel and then we'll sick what's it called sicker flex. flex i want to call it sicker cell but that's a disease um, sicker flex the um the end to stop the water from getting underneath the flashing and then um then we'll put our decking floor on top and we're using recyclable plastic decking so even though it'll get wet it won't rot which is good we mould the flashing using a level. Making it fit in the channel is a bit of a challenge, but once it's in place, we hammer the edges down flat as best as possible before we stick it down with Sikaflex. While Sandy's finishes off the stairs gutter, I start to rub down the paintwork and filler. I've been banned from using any sharp tools, so I've been relegated to rubbing down. Technically, I'm not supposed to be doing any renovating work yet because of my fingers. So if you're the lovely lady surgeon that saved my fingers, please look away. Andy joins in and helps out on the high bits. He's using his trusty safety ladder. We have filled and rubbed the wood down as best as possible. It's never going to be perfect by any means, but it will look 90% better than it did. 
After going to physio for a while, it was apparent my skin was rotting away. It's not easy to see in this image, but the white part on my finger is concaved where the flesh had eaten away. Sadly, the hand clinic didn't think this was a problem. However, my doctor on the other hand disagreed and I was put on even stronger antibiotics that were possibility of going into hospital again for more surgery. The hand clinic wanted me to wait another week. My doctor said if I'd waited that long, I would have lost my finger. It pays to have a second opinion. Next time on renovating number five, we start on the exterior around the back of the house. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe and share.